another fascinating episode of the Trendsetting Property Show. Last week, we began a conversation on the Circle Movement, popularly known for their pocket-friendly loans. We continue this conversation today with a highlight of untapped investment opportunities. The expert segment brings an in-depth analysis on the pros and cons of joining this movement. When it comes to accessorizing your space, we bring endless ideas on TV stands and entertainment centers. Later, on the home ownership segment, we continue our conversation we started last week on the pain of losing a home and the joy of getting back on the property ladder. Interesting. Anybody who has been in business um, and is successful today will tell you, if you're a startup, don't borrow at all. Finally, look out for ideal investments on the property gallery. If you're looking to get onto the property ladder or for timely in-depth insights on this industry, just sit back, relax, and let's begin this journey together. Connect with us on our social media platforms and let's talk. As always, there is something for everyone. Circles continue to change the property market from low-cost investments, mega developments, and pocket-friendly loans. Let's see the opportunities available within this movement. We kick off with a project in the leafy suburbs of Kitengela. This gated community offers three bedroom bungalows. With Kenya shillings 4.5 million only, your property dreams becomes a reality at Gasemo Estate. Let's have a look. Gasemo Estate is a cluster housing project located 11.5 kilometers from Kitengela town along Kitengela Namango Road. The project includes 24 units of three bedrooms for sale. Accommodation includes spacious living room, wide windows letting in a lot of natural light, fitted kitchen, visitor's cloakroom, two bedrooms with fitted wardrobes, and master bedroom ensuite. Salient features include high perimeter wall, carbro paved walkways, solar lighting systems, solar water heating systems, water tanks and borehole system, septic tanks and greenery. The price guide for the three bungalow apartment is 4.5 million Kenya shillings. As a return on investment, the price is 25,000 Kenya shillings per month. Next, we visit another pocket-friendly project in one of the upcoming suburbs in Katani. If you're drawn to natural landscapes, look no further. With a 10% deposit at Lancet Village, you can begin your home ownership journey right here. Let's see what they have to offer. Lancet Housing Cooperative Society Limited presents the Lancet Village situated in Katani, Siokimau. 
It is located near Katani Primary School, Katani Secondary School and Brigida Morello Girls Secondary School. This is an ultra-modern estate encompassing four-bedroom machinettes, three-bedroom apartments and two-bedroom apartments. Accommodation includes entrance porch with a lobby, guest cloakroom, guest bedroom, lounge, spacious kitchen, dining area, laundry or utility area, detached SQ, two-bedroom sharing toilet or bathroom, master ensuite bedroom with separate tub and shower, and inbuilt wardrobes. Salient features include high perimeter wall, secure main gate, 24-7 security system, carbo paved driveway, ample parking area, well manicured gardens, standby backup generator for common areas, boho on site, waste treatment point, and street lighting. The estate has other amenities like an estate gym, a commercial center, recreational parks with a pub, a butchery, fast food joints, salons or barbershops, a clinic or laboratory, enough water storage facilities and an estate borehole. Along the way, we spotted another hot property in Mulolongo Mavoko area, Prestige Park Estate. This secure gated community is surrounded by malls, prime institutions and Jomo Kenyatta International Airport is only a few minutes away. This four bedroom maisonettes guarantee a quality lifestyle. Let's have a look. Prestige Park Estate is a gated community offering four bedroom machinettes. The project is strategically located in Mulolongo Town, only 500 meters from Mombasa Road, adjacent to the Trans African Highway. Within the surroundings are prime malls, including the Gateway Mall, the Digital Mall, and the Signature Mall. The location also boasts prime institutions such as Viraj International Academy. Mulalongo Primary School, and Solomon Primary and Secondary Schools. The SGR Sokimao Terminus is only a few minutes away. Accommodation includes spacious living room, kitchen with multiple cabinets, master ensuite, four bedrooms with inbuilt wardrobes. Salient features include carbo paved parking, front yard gardens, county water, and perimeter wall. The price is 9.5 million Kenya shillings, and the rental income is 35,000 Kenya shillings per month. Finally, last week we highlighted Crystal Rivers, a mega development located only 25 kilometers from the Nairobi CBD. This project is designed to cater to the rapid urbanization and demographic shifts in the suburbs. Let's have a look. Located only 25 kilometers from Nairobi CBD, on the Mombasa Dual Carriageway, and only a 10-minute drive away from the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, Crystal Rivers is the ideal living space for you and your family. Integral parts of the Crystal Rivers experience is realizing your home ownership dream right at the edge of the city. Here you choose between three and four bedroom townhouses or the well-designed three bedroom apartments. Crystal Rivers give you the luxury of living close to all amenities in a far from ordinary location. In 
In this private gated development, you'll find a hospital, the Java Coffee House, and your shopping needs taken care by the Anchor Supermarket, Naivas, the place that saves you money. We're looking at crystal rivers in Earth River because of, um, of several things that are happening. Um, you can see through the traffic, through the construction, a lot of people are living in the Kitengela Athi River. And then there's new roads coming up, which is going to extend the Nairobi suburbs all the way to Machakos. So if you look at it within the short term and the long term when the mall is ready, well, that should be the best place to be because it's a long way off from where we are in Nairobi Hospital. And with these centers that we are opening, the whole idea is actually that we are much more accessible in terms of uh, if you have an incident, like um, I have a cough now and everything like that, it's easy for you to be treated in that particular center and traveling over the narrow belt. In the case that you also have a heart attack, yeah, you normally need to be within a good center in the first half hour. So those centers will be fully staffed with doctors, nurses, we'll have x-ray, ultrasound, laboratory equipment that we're able to treat you. So limited opening hours, initially from 8 till 8 p.m., okay. uh, depending on the demand. But you should be able to, what we call in our language, for patients who are walking mm -hmm. and moving, and we should be able to treat you, mm -hmm. go home. Mm -hmm. If you're very sick, then we can actually transfer you. Crystal Rivers is a good opportunity for us to expand our brand. Um, we have a pretty high concentration of branches in Nairobi, including seven. Um, I'm working on the eighth in CBD, and you've seen us move into areas, especially residential areas, um, that our customers are, are moving to. So I think uh, Crystal Rivers is along one of those arteries where it's, it's on Mombasa Road, which is a major road. Um, it's also, um, if you look at the residential areas, just expanding along Arthi River into Kitegela, it's a really interesting dynamic area. And so, With the very mall, heavy population. Very heavy population. Yeah. So, it's very well positioned um, to meet our, our consumers. And a lot of, you see that area um, getting back into town, especially on the weekends, can be challenging with traffic. So, we want to be very conveniently placed for those consumers. For Crystal Rivers, it's one of the most uh, strategically located mall. It's uh, in a location between Nairobi and Machakos at the river. If you look at the catchment, uh, we've done our research, about 35% are homeowners, which means more disposable income in that area. And there's more room, more room for, you know, for growth. And uh, if, if, if you look at uh, how things are going, that will be the bedroom of Nairobi. So, and you know, with, the, with, with also the, the expansion of Mombasa Road, it's going to open up the two towns, the Machakos and other satellite towns in between. And that uh, is the re main reason as to why we moved to Crystal Rivers. What should we expect at Crystal Rivers? Expect a food market uh, whereby you can come in, pick your fish, take it to the deli, give instructions on how it's, we want it to be cooked, go to the, you know, the vegetable area, pick some fruits, go to the juice section, say these are, I want my juice made, 
that is the kind of revolution we are bringing into retail. For us, before we open a store, there's a lot of research that uh, goes into it. We, 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 we mostly want to understand the catchment. How is the catchment? How are the people there? How is the disposable income? That is key to us. The, the second thing is accessibility. Is the site accessible? And how will it, how will it evolve in future? For instance, as we are seeing you know, sites being put off by infrastructure. So we, are, we want to see how will that site uh, you know, work for us in the future. We're also looking at the rent, because uh, nowadays you know, the rent is too high. We, there are some uh, you know, malls that we've not gone into because, purely because of the rent or not, and all that. So those are some, some of the basic key elements that we look at. Crystal Rivers Mall ushers you into a world of unsurpassed retail variety and quality. With three levels of premium shopping experience, the mall is home to more than a hundred local and international stores. The bustling mall is the heart of the unique Crystal Rivers experience and set to be the destination to be and be seen at. The mall has been designed with security in mind and offers three secured entrances onto the main retail level with parking for over 700 vehicles on the lower ground level and upper ground parking deck. Get ready to shop, dine, work and play. With the catchment around Crystal Rivers, you'll find investment opportunities. If you're looking to expand your reach in the banking sector, ATM facilities, a fashion outlet, a cinema hall, or a kids entertainment center, this is the place for you. Just call on us and we'll help you open shop in this fine establishment. Property World presents an array of opportunities, but not every investment yields fruits. Here at First Avenue, we understand the difference and can advise you on the best options. Visit our offices and let's have this conversation. Next, pros and cons of joining the circle movement. Of the questions we keep getting on the circle movement are what are the advantages of joining a circle how does one join and where does one begin let me start by saying the first step of joining a circle is to establish your needs after which you choose a circle that caters to those needs secondly circles come in handy with the quick turnaround time when borrowing money they are also like personal financial managers, investing in other products and earning dividends for their members. Whereas circles instill a consistent and healthy saving culture, different circles have different rules of engagement, but most of them allow members to save for at least six months before qualifying for a pocket-friendly loan. In addition, interest rates are as low as 12% on a reducing balance per year. And if you borrow, the repayment period is between three to five years. Finally, the requirements for joining a circle are very simple. All you need is your national ID and a passport photo, but it's important to conduct due diligence. We are taking a short break, but there's much more ahead. Don't go away. 
Welcome back. It's that time for interior decor tips. TVs have evolved from the heavy old boxes to portable flat screen sets, paving way for a transition in TV stands from the wooden inbuilt wall units to portable and glass framed consoles. The size of a TV stand depends on how large your TV is. You want the stand to be larger than the television itself, but not so large that it looks disproportionate. A good rule to follow, the TV console should be at least 3 inches wider than the television itself. With a wider buffer on either side, you'll be less likely to knock the television when walking by. Be keen to match your overall decor with the TV stand. The market offers varied options from blues to reds to yellows and to neutrals that blend in perfectly with other furniture. Finally, consoles with extra storage go a long way, keeping your space organized. Choose stands with drawers and open cabinets for your remotes, DVDs, magazines and even family photos. We've seen interior decor reinventing itself over time. If you're looking to refresh your old furniture and give your home that spark, call on us and our experts will be happy to take you through the process. Next, the home ownership journey is full of challenges. Last week, Mary shared her story on losing her home and business to bouncing back Let's hear how she finished strong. Looking back, what would you have done differently? For starters, I would never have borrowed against my home to start a business. It's really for me was the beginning of the end. So you've worked so hard, you bought, you know, I had bought my first apartment and then I'd sold that, I'd bought a second place, I had a little bed sitter that I knew, you know, I had a tenant, but then I went into business and I borrowed against, I took a second mortgage over those homes um, um, in order for me to raise the money I needed uh, for my business. So two lessons for me from that is one, don't borrow to set up a business. And I think anybody who has been in business um, and is successful today will tell you, if you're a startup, don't borrow at all. Grow your business slowly. But if you have to borrow, do not borrow against your home. Grow organically, grow um, your business slowly. What I did is I started a business and I took a second mortgage on my home, what they used to call a covering bond, to raise the money to secure the financing I needed for my business. It was new and everything, so, you know, no history. It so was I, just a dream then. It was a dream. <laughs> and a beautiful dream. And I can dream. tell you, irrespective of whether that business is earning a single cent, within 45 days of you signing on the dotted line and, get, and drawing down on that facility, you have to repay. So it is. So you need the patient capital either from a venture capitalist or whatever you want to call them, friends or your own savings, because the banks are ruthless. If that business does not work, what have you given a security? Your and home. remember, you're also paying more on that mortgage because it's a second mortgage. So your home. So the business, for whatever reason, very many things outside our control didn't work. And so I lost the business and I lost the homes. That was painful. You know, your home, like I said, is your, you know, it's your haven, it's your space, it's your little castle. 
you know, and, and that's where you go when everything is, you know, falling apart. And then that goes as well. So it was a very, very difficult journey. And today I, you know, when I talk to people, I tell them, don't borrow, don't borrow. What can you do differently? And even now that I, when I started my practice, I said, I am not borrowing a cent. You start in a small space, work or whatever, build your capital, move to the next space. Build, build it organically. Build grow, it organically. Grow organically. Exactly. Stop, stop doing big. Start small. Wow. And there's no shame in starting small. Yes. Yeah. There's no shame in starting oh, no. small. Yeah. Just start. Just start. <laughs> wow, that's interesting. How was that moment when the auctioneers were calling on you, writing letters? How was oh that? Oh my gosh, you can't sleep. You can't sleep. You you know, you're negotiating with the banks. I mean, thankfully I had um, you know, I had a history with the banks. Um, but still it doesn't stop that once they have to foreclose, they have to foreclose and um, they need to get their money back. I must say that historically in Kenya, a lot of people lost their homes through the auction. Mm -hmm. And I feel sometimes it's because of those historical issues, people don't borrow. People got scared in Kenya to borrow for mortgages. And that's why sometimes I feel that our mortgage market is very low because people remember their homes. Yes. Their parents lost their home mm -hmm. because they had taken a mortgage. And it's a very hard moment. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you, nobody can build a life in a home at, by borrowing a double digit. There was a time, I mean, people were borrowing at 19% and then shoop, the mortgages were up to 25, 26%. What that means for your monthly repayment, I mean, given that, you know, here for some reason, um, you know, you could actually be earning a million bob, but you're taking home 10,000 shillings. I don't know how that happens. Yes. You know, there's a sense that, um, the banks can change the interest rate to whatever it is at you know and, and irrespective of what your income is and whatever your circumstances are you can't negotiate as a pupil and a very young lawyer, i remember you know 99 2000 or 98 99 it was very difficult i think there was an issue with the interest rates even at that time and i would sit with people who um uh, you know, we're about to send auctioneers to, they've received the notices, and you have to sit with them and take down a statement and, you know, that you can then prepare, a, you know, some something to the bank, you know, in order for them to be able to make a payment plan with the bank. That inhumane way of dealing with people and homeowners is a very, very difficult thing. And hopefully it's something that will change in future. But you're right, as long as people remember how the fluctuation used to affect them and they had no say. You wake up today, you borrowed at 19 or 14 percent and now it's 25. People lost their homes. And yes, I will build my home brick by brick. <laughs> Given that you've gone through the whole circle, what would you advise a first-time home buyer who is looking at you and saying, oh Mary, you look so pretty, you look everything put together. Are you sure? <laughs> oh my goodness, we don't always look put together. Trust me, when um, you're getting those letters from the bank, um, you are not put together at all. But um, there's a couple of things. If you're going to take a mortgage for your first home, you have to look at what you can afford. Um, so for me, it's very simple. 30% of your earnings, not gross, your net, your net pay, not more than 30% should go towards your home and your car. You know, just those big fixed costs. And then you have, you know, because then the cost of running the home, paying your mortgage, I mean, um, you know, if you're repaying towards a car, your fuel, those running costs, 30%, maximum 35 should go towards that stuff. So in the event that there's a fluctuation, you have a You're buffer. Secure. You You're secure, you have a, a buffer. Yes, you have a buffer. Yeah. And then you have to have another 30% that you are saving for a rainy day, okay? So- Then the 40% is what you spend. 40%, you can invest in whatever you want, whatever you can invest. And remember, you still have to have that 10% that you don't account to anybody mm -hmm. <laughs> to just spoil yourself. So, so if you balance it that way, then um, you know you might be able to bear some shocks during so the, the hard times. You have the, a good buffer. You have a good buffer. I mean, those are things I was learning when I had lost everything. You know, so you know that splitting things, making sure you have some savings, making sure you manage this. Um, but um, one of the things that came to people's rescue um, in South Africa as well was. Um, I think it was a National Credit Act or something like that, that made sure that 
people could not borrow more than 30% actually of their income. And uh, because, you know, it was a very consumer-driven society, you know, you, you had your car that you were uh, paying off, you had store cards, you know, you go to Edgar's or Woolworth's or Stutterford's and you have a card for that. And you have your credit you card. You have your credit card, you have your, everything was, you know, on credit. And you, you bought your huge TV, you know, on credit. Everything was on credit, including the clothes on your back. It's almost like the American market. It is. So you use one card to pay off another, and, what, and, and that was very difficult. And it got to a point, you know, and we're here today, where you hear people are earning 30,000, but um, they're probably taking home 3,000 because they've borrowed from so many places. So that, this, that split of 30, 30, 30, 10 is very important. Yeah. Now that you're working on your dream home, give, just paint the picture of that home. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm actually a very simple person. I like clean, fine lines. I like um, natural colors and then boost it up with, um, you know, with color. You know, so have solid uh, pastels and that kind of stuff, but then boost it up with color, with, you know, with your red and, you know, blue or gold or whatever it is. I like fine lines. I like lots of light. Um, and then, of course, you have to look at a place where um, it's not just you. You know, you have to look about uh, at the security that's offered, you know, in that community. And um, I'm hoping that in this area, the things that they have promised, <laughs> they will deliver. I'm sure because there yes. are people who have been tried and tested. Exactly. Tattoo City has been <laughs> tried and tested. I can tell you, <laughs> they will deliver. They have gone through so much, they yes. have to deliver. Yes. You're looking at you know those things I talk about. You know, is there a clubhouse where um, your kids can go and play and swim or whatever it is? You can also it's, entertain. You can also entertain. Um, they have a running track. They have promised a five-kilometer running track for those of us who like to run. Running in Kenya is is a very difficult thing to do. You're fighting against the border borders. You're fighting against the Matatu guys who are overlapping. They don't care that this is a pedestrian, whatever. You have to run off the pedestrian walkway because there's a Matatu behind you on that space. So, so there's, of course, so there's a the security. There's making sure the amenities are there. And people actually are willing to pay a slight premium to make sure that they can be in that kind of space. So our next visit is to your to your dream home? Uh, maybe 18 months, two years, and wow. hopefully we'll be there. Wow. It's been a journey. Indeed, home ownership is not a walk in the park. I'll be glad to hear your challenges and how you conquered them. Call on us or share with us on our social media platforms. So this is a painting. I call it my dancing women. It's it's a very simple piece of work, but I don't even know which artist. I think you like the color most. Yeah? I love the color. I love how the women are moving. I love how flexible they are. I love just you know, the, it, it's in, um, you know it's unproportional, but at the same time it just shows that these women, simple as they are, they enjoy their life. They're happy. Finally, the property gallery with a selection of ideal properties. Shaba Village is a comprehensive gated housing development comprising of 20 units of three bedroom missionettes each with seven squatter. The development also has four blocks of apartments comprising of two and three bedroom units. The development is suitable for homeowners who wish to secure a peaceful home environment, as well as investors who wish to invest in real estate with good rental income. Shaba Village, your perfect modern family home, ingeniously integrated with nature. Accommodation includes spacious lounge with a dining area, fitted American-style open-plan kitchen and utility area, Dobby area, large windows, mahogany doors, wrought iron curtain rods, gypsum ceiling with cornices, high ceilings, high quality finishes, master bedroom ensuite with a balcony, two cozy bedrooms with a shared washroom and visitor's cloakroom. Salient features include quality sanitary fittings, landscaped gardens, ample cabra paved driveway and parking for two, perimeter wall with electric fence, children playground, street lighting, 
underground and high-level water tanks, backup generator, and borehole water. The price guide for the three bedroom machinettes is 12.25 million Kenya shillings. For the apartments, the price guide for the two bedroom apartments ranges from 6.8 to 7 million Kenya shillings. The price guide for the three bedroom apartments range from 7.8 to 8 million Kenya shillings. Located at Juankovet in Gong, this three-bedroom bungalow in a private and quiet environment suitable for a family. It is on Kenvik Road, 800 meters off Gong Road and a short distance from Karen Shopping Center. The house sits on an eighth of an acre and it is accessible via Gong Road and the Southern Bypass. The Karen Hospital, Melchizedek and Aga Khan Hospitals are also within easy reach. Schools nearby include Tassel Junior Academy and St. Monica Academy. Accommodation includes living room, dining area, spacious kitchen, master ensuite, inbuilt wardrobes, tiled floors. Salient features include large private compound, temporary fence, three water tanks with total capacity of 9,000 liters. The price is 11 million Kenya shillings and the title deed for this property is freehold. Orchard Villas, a stylish gated community in Nakuru County. The location, which is approximately 9 kilometers from Nakuru CBD, provides crisp, clean, countryside air and tranquility. Each of the two bedroom bungalows merges modernity and affordability in a standalone design. Nearby institutions include Lanette Primary and Secondary Schools and Moy Forces Academy. Accommodation includes spacious lounge come dining, fitted kitchen, master ensuite bedroom, quality interior fitting and finishing, quality ceramic wall and floor tiles in wet areas. Salient features include perimeter wall, own private compound, water connection and parking for two cars. The introductory price is 3.35 million Kenya shillings. Touchwood apartments are located off Chaka Road in Kilimani in a tranquil neighborhood. These apartments have been built in a tasteful design with landscaped private gardens. The gated community is accessible through Tigoni Road off Timau Road that connects to Chaka Road. Social amenities in close proximity include Yaya Shopping Center, Prestige Mall and Adams Arcade. Accommodation includes spacious living room, dining area, modern kitchen with plenty cabinets and shelves, three bedrooms, master ensuite with bathtub, spacious wardrobes, full-time water supply. Salient features include perimeter wall, 24-hour guards, ample parking and luscious garden. Rental price is 90,000 Kenya shillings per month. The property gallery is where you'll find endless investment opportunities. The bus tour is around the corner. Perhaps you're wondering, why should I spend the day on a bus? Well, let me break it down. Are you looking to get onto the property ladder or do you want to understand the investment opportunities available in this sector? Then this is your day. The 
Bastua gives you an opportunity to mingle with experts in the legal and financial sectors, as well as developers. I must say, a little talk with an expert can make a lifetime difference. Book your seat today. I'll definitely like to go on more bus tours. Uh, I would still really like to see uh, a lot more property that are out there in the market. Property investment is at the top level of uh, investment that uh, you're going to make in your lifetime. So you've got to really, really be careful on what you're trying to do and understand the supply market, what exactly is out there and, and, and compare the different prices as well as the uh, value that you are going to extract when you eventually decide to invest in whatever you want to invest in. If you're looking at buying property, owning land or something, this is where you're supposed to be. We need more exposure and I'm really grateful for the exposure because from here I don't think I'll be the same. And ideally I've also come to see the importance of investment. <laughs> Another interesting event in our calendar is the Up Market Expo. If you're a developer, an investor, or a player in this industry, this expo is just for you. Just call on us and pick your stand today. We've come to the end of today's show. Thank you for staying with us. Before I sign off, many are asking, where are the opportunities in this sector? If you're an investor or a developer looking at areas to invest, currently the market points at three different areas. First, there is an increase in demand and supply of student accommodation due to our large young population who are now entering into universities. Secondly, with the rapid urbanization and demographic changes in the counties, we see changes in consumer behavior, creating a demand in the retail space, the next big thing. concept taking shape and attracting both local and international players is master planned communities. This is driven by the government addressing infrastructure constraints, opening up new areas that have always been considered rural. Finally, with the ongoing infrastructure development, investors and developers entering the market today will be able to reap the rewards in the form of high returns and explore new opportunities as they rise. That's it for today and thank you for watching. See you again next week. As always, there is something for everyone. Kwaheri!